The two films we're looking at today hold a special place for many ocean lovers, myself included. So I just want to clarify that the goal here isn't to criticize the films. It's more of an invitation to look at how our perspective changes as we have life experiences, as we get older. Like, did you think about these things when you first saw these movies? Did these things occur to you? Because I know for me, the answer is no. Continuing from last week with the theme of movies that when I first saw them, I didn't really think twice about the mention of shark nets. And now while I edit my film, I have rewatched those films and was like, wow, um, how did I not even think about that? Well, the first one I'll mention briefly is Bruce Brown's Endless Summer. What a great film. Man, I wanted to become those guys. Just going around the world, chasing the summer, finding all of these amazing surf spots with without uh, the coastline being populated. You know, it's amazing. It shows how fast everything's been developed. They had all of these amazing surf areas and there was no one there but them. Anyway, they ended up going through the Kwazu Natal coastline and mentioned sharks and they're like, I think they just very quickly said, oh, the shark problem is so bad there that they put in nets. Morning comes pretty early in Durban. The sun is already up and it's only 4.30 a.m. It's already 80 degrees out, water temperature about the same. With the warm water, there's a tremendous problem with sharks. As I mentioned, sharks are a tremendous problem here. If you go in the water away from the main beach, the odds are 50-50 you'll be killed by a shark. This beach is meshed or netted against sharks, but even here you keep your eyes open. You look over the top of a wave and see a fin coming toward you. Your heart stops. The filmmakers didn't mean any harm, but that's quite a stat they just threw out there. A 50-50 chance that you'll be killed by a shark if you go away from the main beaches, which is to say the netted beaches. That's quite the promotion for the Natal Sharks Board and shark culling. I, I probably thought that was cool because... Not, not the killing of the sharks, but the danger level. Like the idea of sharks menacing a coast. You know, only later when you grow up do you realize that it's a bunch of BS. Those guys didn't know it was BS. You know, they weren't intentionally lying. Uh, most people don't know that it's BS. You go there and you're told that this is a fact. The people that live there believe that it's a fact. So the filmmakers expressed that it was a fact to an audience that almost certainly couldn't possibly know better. But the film of real focus today that also uh, was based on that coast, or at least it started there, is Blue Water, White Death. That one holds a special place for shark enthusiasts because getting footage of a white shark was still new. It was still a challenge. And this was still an animal that people didn't know that much about you know it was just presumed that if you're in the water and a white shark is in the water you're dead and in fact the mentality toward most sharks wasn't a lot better than that around the world so when they had the footage of them swimming with the oceanic white tips i'm sure that was absolutely mind-blowing for people well let's start with that scene the cage wasn't it that get you for sure and look, I'm not I'm not trying to rip on these heroes like Valerie Taylor uh, because they were pioneers. But it was just so interesting during the briefing on shore mentioning, you know, if a shark is too aggressive, go ahead and hit it with the bang stick. You know, it has a, an explosive device. If any sharks come too close or look dangerous... You simply pull the safety catch out and ram the head against the shark. Sorry, the actual quotes were, if a shark comes too close or looks too dangerous. That's actually even worse than what I said. What size cartridge is that? 20 gauge. It's really deadly. You know, a little explosion in the brain if you hit it in the head. Look. 
look, I know it's Valerie Taylor, so forgive me, but the way she was nervously jabbing at sharks after they'd already gone by. Next time, just stay on the boat. I mean, the shot wasn't that important. Looks like the camera people were handling the closeness of the sharks a lot better. It's not just how unpleasant that death looks. It's the idea of humans making a decision about what is too aggressive. You know, you couldn't really determine that the behavior is that much different than the behavior of the other sharks. And the almighty human says, well, that's enough for me. You're going to die. You know, that sort of power over the existence of other creatures. And, you know, it's not like they retaliated and suddenly turned on the humans and started killing everyone. It was just like this such an unexpected act of violence. And that shark fluttered to the ocean floor. And life continued for the rest of the sharks and the humans. And for those wondering, yes, I have dove with oceanic white tips and They've made contact with me quite often. They're not shy. That makes them great to dive with, makes them great to film. And, you know, of course, I have the luxury of being a shark diver today where we know a lot more. But based on my experience of those sharks actually making physical contact with me several times, but not doing anything that was actually violent it makes me look at this scene and think that was probably really unnecessary. Any time that you have to hype it up in post-production, it was bullshit because they insert a close-up of her head, they insert her looking alarmed, they insert a close-up of a shark moving in on not her, but one of the camera operators, a close-up of preparing Bang stick. I guess they just wanted to show Valerie defending herself against a dangerous shark. That's fantastic. Because if the shark won as you did, that's where it would have happened. But the reason I finally decided to record this episode today is that I've been re-editing the segments of the film with the whales. And I've had some uh, wonderful experiences diving with humpback whales. And it's going to be an important part of the film. And in this film... The search begins on the whaling grounds 100 miles off Durban. Sharks attracted by harpooned whales infest these waters. My film takes place on the KwaZulu-Natal coast, and so does the film Blue Water, White Death. And they harpoon whales, and they show it. And it's... Not easy to watch for me, personally, uh, but there's a lot more to it than that. It's this definite tie to the shark calling and the shark problem, which is pretty much just a reality that can't be denied, unless, of course, you are the Natal Sharks Board and your business depends on pretending that the whaling taking place there wasn't attracting sharks. I mean, this movie, you know, you, there's books and there's just the timeline of shark bites on humans and the timeline of whaling coincide uh, perfectly. And then when whaling ended, the shark bites went away. Of course, that was also when these shark nets were going up. So my idea is that the end of whaling was the real solution and the shark nets got to take the credit and are continuing to slaughter uh, animals needlessly. The day's catch is towed to Durban. I wonder how many people knew that that was a major whaling station um, and there were other ones on that coast. It wasn't just that one, but right there in Durban Harbor, 
and just hauling in all of these carcasses. I mean, more carcasses than you even want to imagine over decades. And <laughs> they got big sharks coming in. Lo and behold, amazing. I mean, if you've watched enough shark shows, you'll see that the most coveted form of bait to use is whale because it's such a strong attractant. But, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little trickier to use mammal meat on television for a form of entertainment or, you know, for attracting a, another species. So, and that with the Marine Mammal Protection Act, etc., you don't see it that often unless they get a special permit. They get this permit and woohoo, you know, action is on. Got the ultimate attractant, whale meat. And yet, and yet, that had nothing to do with the shark bites uh, on the Natal coast, where the Durban beaches were attracting tourists and whaling was taking place at the exact same time. Like literally hauling carcasses of whales past people recreating. And Blue Water White Death mentions this and mentions that the reason that they're choosing that area is the whale activity and that it's known to be an attractant. They're extraordinary creatures, marvelously intelligent. The rate they're being hunted now, they'll be extinct before we, we really come to understand them. They talk about, oh, the shame of the whaling and, you know, what a magnificent species oh it's too bad oh by the way you mind killing one for us for our film i mean they didn't even do a good job of hiding that they were anxious for the whalers to get a whale so that they could make progress with their film shoot no whales have been sighted today they're never going to be able to spot whales with these white caps there's whales up there there again yeah three or four of them up there well, they ought to get a shot at him soon if the whale's big enough to shoot at. He's in range now. This one ought to bring sharks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, I see it. Well, that one ought to attract sharks with all that blood. Look, for all the implied judgment in this episode... Really, I just want people to think about how we can separate different species and separate different species when we want to, based on what we want to do, how we want to treat them. Whether it's a whale or a shark or a cow or a dog, whatever the situation calls for, we can find a way to justify it. And the other bit of speciesism was the man saying, they're going to be gone before we even understand them. It's such a shame how they're hunting these whales. Because the real shame of whales going extinct is that humans didn't get to study them. Again, it's this idea that nature doesn't have inherent value unless a human applies it. Or that what the whale was doing or what the shark was doing or any species that you want to talk about wasn't happening prior to humans studying them and attaching invasive devices to them and tr plotting it all on a graph over a 10 year period of time. And now we as humans can declare that what they were doing was actually important. I'm curious how many people who watched blue water, white death back in the day, you know, a long time ago, I'm curious if it affected you seeing the whales being harpooned. And I'm curious how you reacted to the sharks being killed. Because love sharks or not, I'm guessing people were inclined to believe that, yes, hey, sharks are cool, but don't get too close. Don't endanger me or I'll have to kill you. And whales, you know, I think knowledge about whales and Compassion for whales and exposure of the horror of the whaling industry is certainly greater now than in the past. So I wonder if even seeing an amazing whale being harpooned violently like that, I wonder how that affected people back then. 
Or maybe it's not about the time. Maybe it's just what type of person you are. I hope that you found this retrospect of these two excellent movies to be intriguing. Did this make you think any differently? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments.